Hello guys! So welcome back for another video lesson. So for this specific video lecture, we are going to learn about solids. So this is the week 3 lesson from your lesson packet. So I do hope you were able to watch week 1 and week 2 because again, it's one of the coverage for your pre-midterm exams. So before I begin, no, um, if you could hear some kind of background noise, there are actually kind of workers na nagtrabaho sa kuan sa balay kay again kamulo siya o kanang renovate so please bear with it na lang it's not that kanang inconvenient mampod but if ever lang yun ha so yeah I hope you could go through the lesson without so much kanang distraction so yeah let's begin so these are the objectives that we will try to achieve at the end of this lesson. So we would uh, want you to have an understanding of the differences in structure of crystalline and amorphous solids, and then uh, the different types of crystals and their properties. So they are classified either as uh, ionic, covalent, molecular, and metallic. So there's only one focus of this lesson. We'll be talking about types and properties of the so if you could remember so week 2 ang topic kay uh, properties of liquids so karon uh, we would be talking about properties of solids so if you could remember from your kinetic molecular model nga lesson na one of the postulates uh, says that solids have a definite shape and volume due to the compact arrangement of their particles so because of the compact arrangement of these particles it's also the reason why solids exhibit particular properties so, for example, solids exhibit ductility, solids exhibit hardness, solids exhibit uh, malleability, and other properties that are not exhibited by liquids and gases. So, solids are broadly classified into two. They could be either crystalline or crystalline. Uh, either way, I'm pronounce okay, I'm sure, but important the spelling, you know the rule. And then, uh, amorphous solids. So, the difference is, uh, I mean, the main difference between crystalline and amorphous solids is based on the arrangement of their particles. So, for crystalline solids, they have regular, highly ordered, or highly patterned na arrangements in the particles. So, these are usually exhibited by crystals, no, kana sa mga minerals and rocks. So, one example we have here is um, amethyst, this purple one right here, and then we have fluorite, and then we have pyrite. Okay. So the next broad classification of solids, we have amorphous. So instead of having their particles arranged in an orderly or highly patterned arrangement, amorphous solids have a random disordered arrangement. So examples of amorphous solids we have here, kay, uh, rubber, we have gel, and then we have plastic. So in a molecular sense, no, this is how it looks like. This is an illustration on how the particle arrangement between crystalline solids and amorphous uh, solids look like. So if you could compare um, for crystalline solids, this is actually quartz. So basically quartz consists of uh, silicon and two molecules of, I mean two atoms of oxygen. So, in an yang arrangement. Meanwhile, if you compare it to an amorphous solid, example is glass. So, muna ni, muna ni ang itsura, muna ni ang orders or kibali ang pattern sa iyang particle arrangement. So, that's again crystalline or amorphous solids. So, there is this what we call space lattice. No? It refers to the three-dimensional pattern formed with the points representing the location of the particles interacting between a solid. So, the space lattice basically defines the basic structure of the crystal. So, of course, solids are... In 3D, di ba? Kay, I mean, they exhibit uh, width, length, and height. So, ang arrangement sa ilang mga particles in a three-dimensional pattern basically describes or it defines the basic structure of the particular solid. And within this space lattice, natin gitawag na unit cell. Kibali, it's the... Um, it's the specific blocks or it's the... Uh, it's here. It's uh, the smallest unit of the lattice. So combination of the unit cells, you form the space lattice of a particular solid. So each unit cell is stacked together repeatedly to resemble the whole. So we have here an illustration. Of, for example, this one right here, this is the whole solid. As you can see, these circles right here, these are the particles. So di ba, 3D nga arrangement, three-dimensional pattern. So if you take one block, 
That is what we call one unit cell. So, di ba? Unit cells stuck together resemble the whole space lattice of a solid. So, kanisha, if you one block, if you, sorry. So, if you get or if you remove one block there, that's a unit cell. So, this is how it looks like. Okay, three-dimensional pattern. So, this uh, diagram shows the space-filling cubic unit cells and their corresponding lattices. So, you might be wondering how scientists were able to uh, study you know, the structure or the arrangement of the particles between solids. You know? So, it's by uh, this method. We call it X-ray diffraction. It's actually the same method that was used by uh, by Rosalind Franklin. to If you remember that kind of image that was used as a reference by Crick and Watson to discover the double helix uh, structure of the DNA. So, yeah, also as an X-ray diffraction, it provides information on bond lengths and angles. So when you say bond lengths, kibale kung ang proximity sa mga particles between each molecule and then ang angles nila. So because of this, kanang if you have the information on bond lengths and angles, you'll be able to identify the uh, structure itself of the solid, di ba? So ang configuration sa yung particles, ang location, ang arrangement, ang pattern. So this was pioneered by William Henry Bragg and his son William Lawrence Bragg in which they won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1915 because of the work of their work in X-ray crystallography or X-ray diffraction. So substances crystallize to give different crystal structures. So pasabotani class, uh, these crystalline solids, you, you might be wondering no, kani mga crystalline solids, they come in different uh, shapes, diba? So of course, ang ilang shapes kaya magdepende man sa pattern sa arrangement sa ilang particles. Now, there's actually a classification on how these uh, solids crystallize in specific forms or specific shapes. No, we call it the seven crystal systems. So, uh, it they could be a uh, cubic, tetragonal, orthorhombic, monoclinic, triclinic, hexagonal, and rhombohedral, or we also call it uh, trigonal. So this is how they look like. This is basically how the different uh, unit cells in various crystal classes uh, look like. No? So, and, uh, by the way, there are four types of unit cells. Uh, it's, uh, it's either primitive, body-centered, face-centered, and size-centered. So solids can also either be isomorphous or polymorphous. So what's the difference between the two? Isomorphous, isomorphous solids are those that crystallize in the same lattice with the same atomic arrangements. While polymorphous are those substances that crystallize in several arrangements. So I'll, later on, I'll give you an example. Um, for, an, uh, for an example of an amorphous solid, we have sodium nitrate here. So this is the crystal, uh, or crystal appearance or physical appearance of sodium uh, nitrate. Right here is the particle arrangement of the sodium nitrate na, na substance. So this is an example of an isomorphous crystal. Okay. So by the way, sodium nitrate is used in solid propellants, explosives, fertilizers, and for many other uses. While polymorphous solids are those that, um, though they are made up of the same atom or same element, but because of the changes, but because of the changes in the arrangement of their particles and with varying conditions like temperature and pressure got changed in ilang physical form. So if actually diamond is made up of pure carbon, graphite is also made up of pure carbon. So if you look into its molecular context, no, kibaliang iyang molecular structure, ang class system sa diamond, ang crystal system sa diamond is actually cubic, while the crystal system sa graphite is actually hexagonal. So this is an example of a polymorphous solid. Now, let's proceed to the four main types of crystalline solids. So by the way, these are classified in accordance to the nature of bonding or interactions present among their particles. That's why you know, if you could see the different types of crystalline solids, they could be either ionic, molecular, covalent, and metallic. These terms are very familiar, diba? Right? Because again, this are the terms that you were able to encounter before from your Chem 1 or even Bio 1 lecture. So, 
When you talk about ionic solids, of course, these are particles that are bound by electrostatic or ion-iron interactions. So aside from that, ang types of molecules or particles that are present in ionic solids are basically ions. So ions occupy the unit cell or the basic unit of the space lattice. So very good example of ionic solids, okay, we have sodium chloride or what we call in, in layman's term, parang table salt. Okay, so... These are some of the specific properties exhibited by ionic solids. Uh, first one is their melting points. So, ilang melting point sky high. So, its melting point ranges from 673 to 3,273 Kelvin, or that's 400 to 3,000 degrees Celsius. So, it's actually high, no? So, aside from that, ionic solids are hard, brittle, but they are also poor conductors of heat and electricity. So, however, in their molten state, no, ionic solids are actually strong electrolytes because the ions are in their free mobile forms. So, their ions are free to move around. So, this is an example of the space lattice of a sodium chloride. So, sodium chloride again is an example of an ionic solid. Okay, so the green balls represent the chlorine ion and then the gray balls represent the sodium ion. Okay, so kind of ionic solid. Now the second one we call them molecular solids. So from the term molecular, no, they are made up of molecules or atoms. So the kind of forces inter so the kind of forces interacting between the particles in a molecular solid include dispersion, dipole dipole, and or hydrogen bonds. So though ang ilang po an, uh, Though these are held by these types of intermolecular forces, they're actually weak. They are actually relatively weak. So, which is also the reason why ang ilang melting points kay low. Pasabotan na you only need um, less amount of energy and heat to convert it to its molten state. So, it ranges from 1 to 673 Kelvin or that's from negative 272 to 400 degrees Celsius. So, uh, some of the properties exhibited by molecular solids, okay, they are soft and are poor conductors of heat and electricity. So, examples of molecular solids, we have methane, phosphorus, molecular oxygen, and carbon dioxide. So, you might be wondering, no nga ma, methane and carbon dioxide, di ba, bang gases man sila? They have actually solid forms. So, if they are in their solid form, we call it, or they are classified as molecular solids. So, this is the tetrahedral molecular structure of methane. By the way, methane, it's a gas usually used in kanangkuan. Kanang sa mga liquefied petroleum gas, di ba? Kanang sa mga gas to. Ang gas na gagamiton. <laughs> so, it's an example of a molecular solid. So, this is the structure. Ang iyang skeletal or ang iyang skeleton kibali. Okay, this one right here. So, this is uh, the carbon. And then, we have four... Uh, hydrogen atoms because remember methane is CH4. Now the third one we call it network or covalent solids. So very obvious since we call them covalent solids, a type of bond that exists between the particles kay covalent bonding. So ano gitawag siya nga network? Because um, these particles or these atoms are covalently bonded in a highly cross-linked rigid network. So, usually, covalent solids involve large or giant molecules. Okay? So, aside from that, covalent solids are very hard and they have very high melting points. So, i-compare ni mo sa ionic solids and atong isa, uh, molecular solids, covalent solids have very high melting points. So, it ranges from 1,473 to 4,273 Kelvin or that's 1,200 to 4,000 degrees Celsius. It's very high, di ba? Though they have very um, high melting points, they are actually poor conductors of heat and electricity. So, why is such? It's because of the covalent bonding. If you could remember in the covalent bond or in covalent bonding, electrons are just shared by the atoms. So these electrons are not free to move or they are not free to move around. Okay? 
So, I had mentioned this before, katong si diamond and graphite, I mean earlier, na aside from being polymorphous solids, they are also allotropes of carbon. So, pasabot na na diamond is an allotrope of graphite, graphite is an allotrope of diamond. Diamond and graphite are allotropes of carbon. So, these are solids that are different in physical forms, but they have the same elements in the same physical state. So they are both solids. They are both consist of carbon, pure carbon, but they have different physical um, appearance. Okay, so that's again because of the bonding and the arrangement of the carbon atoms that uh, interact between these substances. So as I have mentioned brief, uh, before, the um, structure of graphite is hexagonal, and then the structure of uh, um, I mean, ang crystal system sa graphite kay uh, hexagonal, ang crystal system sa diamond kay cubic. And of course, we are down to the last one, metallic solids. So actually, among the four types of crystalline solids, a metallic solids ang pinaka best or the, these are the these are excellent thermal and electrical conductors. So why is such? No, it's basically because these metal atoms swim in a sea of electrons. So it's bound by metallic bonding, obviously. Okay, metallic solids man siya. So the, it's, it involves metallic bonds. And then the as I have mentioned earlier, no, metal atoms swim in a sea of electrons. So thus, the intermolecular attraction exists between the molecules of the metal atom and the negatively charged electrons. So these are the properties exhibited by metallic solids. So we have malleability, ductility, luster, and hardness. So you could, uh, if you could notice, no one of the main differences between metallic solids and other metals. Kay ang mga metallic solids kay shiny sila, di ba? Because kanat they have luster. So, amen. Though they are good conductors of heat and electricity, it doesn't mean na taas ng ilang melting point or low ang ilang melting point. It actually differs. Okay? It ranges from 234 to 3,673 Kelvin or from negative 39 degrees Celsius to 3,400 degrees Celsius. So, uban uh, metallic solids na high ang melting point, uban na metallic solids na low ang iyang melting point. So, good examples of metallic solids, okay, we have copper, nickel, and chromium. So this one right here is copper. So this is the raw form of copper. So kana gakakita ninyo nga copper sa mga electrical wires din mo undergo pa na process, di ba? So this is the molecular structure of copper. It's an example of a metal so. Okay, this last topic right here, I won't really be kind of digging deep into it because kind of it just says or it just explains why metals or metallic solids are the best um, conductors for electricity. So this is the molecular orbital or MO theory. It is also known as the band theory of metals. So can you, I just want you to remember this class. Can you show part? Okay. It says thou or the molecular orbital or MO theory states that for metallic solids, MOs are formed from the valence atomic orbitals of the metal atoms. So it's uh, because of the interaction of the electrons between these metal atoms, it actually allows metallic solids to be excellent conductors of heat and electricity. Okay, maora na siya. That's all I want you to remember about molecular orbital theory. Okay, so that is all. It's actually a very short topic. So I hope you were able to finish um, watching until the end of the video. So nevertheless, please um, read your lesson packets and study smart. Okay, so if you have questions, again, jot them down and you can communicate it with me so that I could answer some of it for you. But again, not beyond or before class hours or office hours. Okay, so thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. So God bless you in your exams, guys. Bye-bye.